Hello and welcome to yet another video and in this video I'll be talking about this lens right here It's the original Canon EF 35mm f 1.4 L now this lens has been out for a little while now I know and it's also been long discontinued that being said this lens in my opinion still deliver really really nice image quality Really really nice results and also still has really really nice build quality to it as well Especially for the price you can get it for nowadays you, like it's really worth considering this lens in my opinion So without further ado, let's get into the video So the original Canon 35mm f1.4 L. Yes, this lens has been long discontinued, but as I mentioned earlier, this lens still produces really, really nice image quality. It will give you a really, really sharp image result as well, with really, really nice contrast control and everything. But in this video, I'll be talking about the build quality, operational side of things as well, and then I'll go into the image quality, and then I'll go into the conclusion. So let's first start with the build quality, usability. So this lens is really, really nicely built. The downside though is it's not weather sealed. I love weather sealed lenses and this lens is not weather sealed at all. Yes, you can take it out through like light rain, light sandy places like the beach, things like that. But, you know, don't expect it to like really work intensively in the rain or in the desert, in the dust storms and, you know, really, really heavy environment that the, usually landscape photographers or extreme photographers will usually have to endure. So don't do that with this particular lens. But, you know, otherwise this lens is still really, really well built and it will protect or because of the build quality, it will protect the actual inside of the lens from, you know, minor harsh weathers. This lens does have this focus distance, which I really, really like. And talking about the focus distance, um, the focus ring here is really, really nice and smooth. You can't really um, complain about it. This lens, just like some other prime lenses from Canon, like the 82mm f1.2 Mark II from Canon, has the same filter thread, the 72mm filter size here. So if you have that laying around, it's also gonna fit on here and you know being one of the more common or popular filter size that also means you will be able to get really really nice accessories or filters for this camera sorry for this lens for a really really low price so that's another positive thing for me and there's also this focusing window up here which is really really nice and it's also accurate and talking about focusing the focusing ring here the manual focusing ring this is also really really nice but really smooth even after so many years of using it, you can see from the quality, it's been beaten up, been dropped, been scratched so many times. I don't baby my gear at all. Um, so it really, really survived and it's still really, really nice, but really smooth on this particular lens. So it really tells a lot about the, you know, quality of the build. And this manual and AF focusing switch here is also stiff. It's not too stiff like the uh, older 24 to 70 millimeter, but it's really, really nice stiff that you can't really accidentally knock it. So let's say if you don't use camera bags at all and just throw your stuff into the uh, backpack or some random messenger bag or what have you, then you know it will not get knocked pretty easily. It's still really stiff for that. The mount as expected is metal, so that's a nice touch. The autofocusing system on this lens is really, really nice, fast and accurate. Furthermore, it is also somewhat silent. If you compare it to the RF version, it's not completely silent, but you know, if you're talking about like the normal USM motor, this is actually quite silent for the USM motor on an old lens. So yeah, take it as what it is. This lens, in my opinion, also has a really, really nice compact design. So it's a really, really small lens. It's like a traditional size mug, call it like coffee mug or a small coffee mug depending on where you live so yeah it's, it's a really really nice adorable lens to actually carry it's not that much taller than the 50 millimeter 1.2 but it's also much much lighter and for the size and especially for the aperture size as well this lens is really 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 light so you can fit this in your camera bag and not really having to worry too much about the weight of this lens you know, for something that's really, really well built, this is surprisingly quite light in my opinion. I think it's something that you also will have to try it in the shop or try it out somewhere, maybe rent the lens. But to me, this is a really, really light lens to actually carry. Which is a good thing because, for example, if you're a street photographer or 
a documentary photographer, this is a really, really nice lens to really carry around all day because it's not really gonna hurt your neck or your shoulders or however you're actually carrying the lens. It's really that light, you don't, you will not really mind it. And also with that bonus of f1.4, you will be able to get really, really nice stunning images with the f1.4. So it's really, really well designed and also well built yet light quality lens. And another point about the AF is actually not the AF speed, but rather the AF performance in terms of like how accurate it is. This lens doesn't really hunt a lot. Once it finds the subject, it will just lock quickly in focus and it stays in focus. And it's just a really, really pleasant lens to use when you have to do, let's say, continuous AF, or just you really, really need it to focus really accurately on a really specific part of the subject. This lens will get it really, really spot on, and usually it doesn't hunt. It's also easy to focus with this lens in low light with a lot of modern cameras, or like even some of the older cameras like the 5D Mark II, 5D Mark III, it's such an easy lens for those cameras to work with as well for focusing because some lenses like for example the older 24 to 70 millimeter f2.8 is kind of a struggle for even newer cameras to focus with even in low light so yeah having such a lens that's so easy for the camera to work with is also like a convenience especially if you're working professionally on a field and you really need things done quickly. So now over to the image quality. Of course, being an old lens, there are flaws here and there, but those flaws, in my opinion, aren't really big. So the contrast control, for example, it's really nice on this lens, but if you start shooting against direct sunlight or any direct light source pretty much that is strong, the contrast starts to decrease a little bit and the image kind of you know, starts to have this faded effect and the color is not really rich anymore once you have especially really strong sunlight hitting in front. Let's say if you're taking portraits against the really strong sunset or sunrise light that is really hitting the camera directly or directly into the lens rather, the uh, vibrancy or the richness in the other color tones from your image will dramatically decrease into just like a really faded two-tone image. I can't really explain, but yeah, the overall contrast just really, really decreased. And this is actually normal for a lot of older Canon lenses as well, well, a lot of older lenses in general. So for example, this is really common with the older 24 to 70, the older 24 to 105 lenses, the very first generation, 7200 f2.8. So it's, it's, it's really common. And you can definitely fix it in post, but you definitely will need a lot of time to fix the contrast side of things in post, especially with this lens. That being said, things like chromatic aberration, the distortion is easily fixable in post. It does show up and sometimes it can be pronounced, but it's not too pronounced that it's so distracting. It's just pronounced enough that you still can either, you know, use the f1.4 and just make it look natural or just completely get rid of it really, really easily in your editing software, such as Lightroom or what have you. So it's really a flexible lens to use. But if you're, you know, used to those or can cope with those flaws, the image quality out of this lens is really, really nice because it is really nice and sharp. And just because there is a decrease in quality of the contrast during, you know, direct light source hitting into the lens, doesn't mean you cannot fix it or doesn't mean that the image quality overall doesn't look nice. It still look really nice. There is a character to this lens when you shoot with this lens. And I really, really love that. It's such a fun lens to really use. Of course, it's not for every scenarios, but it is still nice. And if you're mounting this lens with a crop sensored camera, let's say the 1000D, the M50, they will still be able to produce nice image quality out of this lens, despite being a first generation lens and, you know, having to magnify the resolution of the lens because of the crop sensor, it still will deliver really, really nice images. And you can use it as like a 50 millimeter on those lenses and you still have the 1.4, the L quality build, the L quality glass, well, albeit that it's, you know, an older L quality standards, things like that, but it is still really nice and there's characteristics. And if you're shooting a lot of portrait with this lens, in my opinion, and also kind of in my taste, personal taste, not being like the most sharpest lens at 30, 35 millimeter range is also a good thing because like, Sometimes if you're shooting portraits, you don't want everything to be super sharp, especially on the face, because you can bring like a lot of wrinkles or 
details that you don't really see with the naked eye more pronounced like certain scar or certain wrinkles that you don't really see with the naked eye but then because of the sharpness of the lens and also also the higher resolution of more modern cameras bringing those flaws out it can look more unpleasant and you know with the face you usually kind of smooth the skin a little bit but still remaining natural you know so this lens still has just the right sharpness in my opinion especially if you're working with portraits. Of course, I heard that the newer Mark II version of this lens is going to be sharper, of course, but also has a much more accurate and better autofocusing system. But at the end of the day, if you're not working a lot like of extreme autofocusing needs, then this lens will get the job done and it will do it really, really well. And you know, at 35mm, I don't think you need such a quick, snappy autofocusing system because it is still kind of a wide angle lens or standard angle lens in my opinion so yeah so now into the conclusion now this lens of course it's been discontinued but i think for the price that you can get it around 500 euros nowadays it's a really really no-brainer i think that you know if 35 millimeter is a focal length that you really really like whether it's for street or for portraits or events or what have you it's really worth it getting this lens. You're getting that really nice f1.4. This is still a really, really nice lens that will really give you rich quality results. It's just, I cannot say enough good things about this lens. Yes, there are flaws, but the flaws are easy to really fix. And certain flaws are just characteristics of this lens that just give your image a really, really nice character. Of course, when it comes to like characteristics of the lens, it is subjective. Some people can hate it, some people can love it. I personally love the quality and the characteristics of this lens. And, you know, if you're looking for like a really budget or cheap Canon 35mm or Canon mount 35mm lens, at f1.4 then you cannot really go wrong with this first generation l lens i think it's going to be nice when working in the harsh environment let's say if you're working like under downpour condition heavy rain and just foggy then of course some mist will get inside the lens and easily ruin your image or just give your image extra effects if you can call it that way of course it's not going to be really well protected but if you can live with that or if you're not going to be going through a lot of harsh environment again i really recommend this lens and for around 500 euros it's just a nice bargain of a lens to really really go for the build quality aside from lack of water sealing is also great i dropped this lens before and it survived and it still focuses really really well very very accurately so i don't condone dropping your lenses often though even though i dropped a lot of my lenses but don't do that it's bad for your gear obviously but you know if you do drop it there's also a higher chance for it to really survive compared to like some really cheap brand new 35 millimeter lenses or knock off 35 millimeter lenses out there so yeah just just keep in mind if, if you really want a long-term investment but also under a budget then this lens is seriously a nice contender anyway before this video gets too long even though i think it's already pretty long at this point if you need a free photography guidebook it's linked down in the description below it's absolutely for beginner it's absolutely for free i made it it's on my website just click and download no need to submit your email address nothing just click and download and i will not send you any newspaper or news letter crap so yeah thank you very very much for watching if you have any questions and or suggestions feel free to send me a message or just leave it down in the comment section below otherwise thank you again very much for watching stay safe have fun shooting bye for now